A Po knows that you always split aces, so the new R7 comes in two versions. The 5 inch Chapo R7 and 6 inch R7 Plus share a lot, both are metal clad knights, with 1080p mold screens, they shoot 13MP images through Schneiderkreutz Natch certified optics and they offer practical dual SIM connectivity. Apo is proud to have covered the two phones almost entirely in metal and kept the duo quite thin, 6.3mm for the R7 and 7.8mm for the R7 Plus. The company also implemented some flagship camera features into the duo, including name brand lens and phase detection autofocus. Both are powered by the same chipset, Snapdragon 615, and run color if it Android 5.1 Lollipop. Despite the premium build and camera, the two remain quite practical with two SIM slots, one of which can be occupied by a micro SD card if you can go without one of the SIM cards. The VOOC charging tech will fill the battery to three quarters in just half an hour. Design the Apo R7 is the more compact of the two devices and comes with a more traditional look. But just because it is outshined by the bigger R7 Plus, doesn't mean it is void of merits itself. The device boasts a slick and clean all-metal exterior and with its more conventional screen size it will probably appeal to a wider audience. The Apo R7 employs a unibody design and what is referred to as aircraft-grade aluminum alloy that has undergone a painstaking 48-step polishing process to achieve the final result. The phone is available in silver and gold colors. As long as we are on the topic of display, the 5.0-inch mold unit seems to be a solid choice. IS offers a superb viewing experience with excellent side viewing angles. Colors are nice and vibrant and the picture is very sharp at 445 ppi and with a nice contrast. We also can't fail to mention that the R7 is quite slim and definitely fits snugly in the hand. It is 143mm tall and 71mm wide with a thickness of only 6.3mm. It weighs in at 147 grams, which is definitely justifiable, considering all the metal. The 2.5D glass and body curves really bring out the best in the design and create a convincing illusion of an even thinner body. Controls there is nothing really out of the ordinary regarding the controls on the R7 and the R7 Plus as well. Whereas competitors like ZTE are going crazy with new and innovative gestures, Apo has stuck to basics. Rather inexplicably, though, the two devices have most of their buttons swapped. On the R7 the power button is on the left and volume rockers on the right, while the R7 Plus has them the other way around. The buttons themselves are nicely rounded and also made of metal. Placement is also convenient in terms of height. Going round the device, on top, we find a 3.5mm audio jack and not much else. There is also a small plastic insert on the top frame, presumably for an antenna. Still, it works as a nice little color accent. The backside of the Apo R7 is a little busier. Naturally, it houses the 13MP camera, which occupies the top left corner, along with a single LED flash. On a side note, a lot is missing from the camera itself, compared to the R7 Plus. There is no dual tone flash, no laser focus and the sensor is different as well. Hardware and performance the Apo R7 shares most of its internals with its bigger sibling the R7 Plus. This strikes as kind of odd, as both essentially offer mid-range chips. They are powered by a Qualcomm Snapdragon 615 SoC, MSM8939, with an octa-core CPU clocked at 1.5 GHz. This is nowhere near as powerful as most current flagships, but should still suffice for fluid experience. The graphics department is run by an Adreno 305, which should breeze through casual games, 
but might struggle with heavier titles. Oppo has opted to put 3GB of RAM in both the R7 and R7 Plus. During the presentation, memory was singled out as a major bottleneck in today's smartphones and 3GB should remedy the fact. This does seem enough, but we still hope the mid-range processor won't throttle overall performance too much. The rest of the specs sheet for the Apo R7 also includes 16 GB of onboard memory and an array of sensors, compass, accelerometer, gyroscope, and proximity sensor. Both devices also have the benefit of Apo's own VOOC fast charging technology. It definitely stands out among the competition. And while we are on the topic of power, the R7 has a non-removable battery, just like its bigger sibling, but it is quite less spacious with a capacity on 2320 mAh, instead of the whopping 4100 mAh on the R7 Plus. Camera The Apo R7 is equipped with a 1.3MP main shooter with ISOCELL sensor and a single LED flash and luckily we managed to put it through its paces. There is also a special HD mode, which takes a few shots and stitches them together to achieve a higher resolution shot. It works fairly well too and we managed to get up to a resolution of 5824 x 4368 pixels. The camera app itself works pretty fast. It launches almost instantaneously and shoots at an impressive rate. The UI is quite reminiscent of the iOS camera app. Just like on an iPhone, you can adjust the exposure by touching and dragging up and down anywhere on the screen. It is really quite convenient. A Po R7 at a glance. Body, 6.3mm thick metal unibody. Screen, 5 mold, 1080p resolution, 445 ppi. Gorilla Glass 3. OS, Android 5.1 Lollipop, Color OS 2.1. Chipset, Snapdragon 615, Octa-Core Cortex-A53, 3GB RAM, Adreno 405. Storage, 16GB, a micro SD card, up to 128GB, can go into the SIM2 slot. Camera. 1.3 MP sensor, Schneider Kreutz Natch lens, phase detection autofocus. Video, 1080p at 30fps. Selfie camera, 8 MP. Connectivity, dual SIM, micro and nano SIM, LTE 150 Mbps, Wi Fi B G N. Battery, 2,320 mag LiPo. VOOC fast charging, 75% in 30 minutes.